Hi everybody, uh, today we are in Hoik and we are joined by Mr. Alan Cumming, who is one of the owners of Love It Mill, one of our favorite mills uh, in Scotland. Can you introduce yeah. yourself? Tell us what you do, who you are. Right, and my, my name is Alan Cumming and I am Design Director of Love It Mill. Uh, Love It Mill is a fairly small but specialist uh, tweed weaver. Uh, we are based in Hoik in the Scottish borders and uh, we have we have no no hesitation in claiming to be the rightful home of tweed uh, the word tweed itself as a as a product category uh, was first uh, invented if you like or came into to play uh, on commercial road which runs just outside the mill and uh, going back to 1826 um, uh, locally, uh, wool woolen cloths, heavy woolen cloths, uh, were classified as tweels. So you'd buy a bale of tweel. Huh, okay. Uh, and the tweel was the colloquial uh, expression for twill. So it was just so you would buy a, a bale of twill woolen. Huh. Um, now, at that time, uh, or around that time, there was a mill, uh, Watson's Mill, just along the road, about 50 yards from where we are now, uh, who were sending some, some tweels down to Locks in London. Uh, not Locks the Hatters, but another part of the family, there was Locks the Merchants. Oh, I never knew. Yeah. Wow, okay. And uh, they, they dispatched these, these tweels down to, to London. And uh, the guy at the other end, uh, receiving the cloth, uh, sort of looked at the, the delivery note and uh, you know, the, but couldn't quite make out the, the calligraphy or perhaps it was smudged, something like that. Uh, and at that time, it was very popular for uh, gentlemen of a certain disposition to, to come up to the borders and fish on the River Tweed. And so he, th he knew that we were somewhere near the River Tweed. Uh, it's actually the River Teviot that runs outside the mill, but um, he misread that as, as Tweed, wrote back, and with, presumably with payment, um, and uh, said, you know, many thanks for a bale of Tweed I received. And Watson, being a canny fellow, uh, realised that this was a, a good, good name for his product, and from then on, the, the word Tweed as a as a definition of this type of cloth, uh, it was born. I see. So, God, so there's there's a bit of history. Yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, so uh, as a result, we can quite rightfully claim to be home of Tweed, as we are, you know, so close to to where it originated, and as I say, the only weaver in town. So I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, and what is the definition of Tweed, technically speaking? Well, if if backtracking to what the tweed originated as mm. it is a woolen twill cloth okay. that's that's how it started um, and it was typically english sheep it was at that time did they import that, wool from other places at that time a lot of it would have been local wools okay um uh, we still use a, a good percentage of local wools but for the the heavier more traditional type qualities uh, the softer lighter type lambs wools you just can't breed in the UK. Right. So they tend to come from Australia, New Zealand, the, the, those parts of the world. Um, but certainly uh, where the opportunity arises to, to use local wools uh, or, or wools from Shetland, which we'll talk about, um, we, we certainly do. Um, would it be fair to summarize it as, so tweed would be, how do I put it? Something a little bit hairy, a little bit dry feeling, a little bit open, a little bit spongy? Yes. Or it doesn't always have to be like it, that? It doesn't always have to be like that. And okay. In fact, going back to the, the traditional sporting tweeds, mm. again, which we make a, uh, a great many of, um, they, they have to be very robust and mm. uh, um, quite compact. Mm. So there are many different variations of, of tweed. Mm. Um, a lot of people will look for the, the difference between Tweeds and tartans, for mm. example. Uh, tweeds um, originated, if you like, the, a lot of the original designs stemmed from estate tweeds. Mm. So if you happen to have your, your own estate, if you were a lord or a lady that had their, their own estate, um, they would have their own uh, uniform. Mm. And that, that tweed could either be woven, uh, could even be either be worn by the family or worn by 
the workers on the estate. Different estates have different rules for, mm. for how they're treated as a woman. And up till There's today, you're still making estate tweets for people it's, too. It's still very much a, a, a very active part of what we do. Right. Um, some of the designs will go back you know, over 100 years and we're still replicating them. Uh, or we will get uh, new estate owners or, or maybe an estate has been split and half of the estate will will come into being and they want their own design. I see. And so, no, every every month or so we'll have quite a few uh, estate tweet uh, uh, requests. And once something's been designed and made as an estate tweet, that's it. Like, no one else can touch that design. Exactly, exactly. We, we, we wouldn't dare replicate it for anybody else. I see. Uh, we have our... our, our, our uh, reg registered tome mm. uh, where, where all the estate tweets go into and uh, we, we guard that. Uh, that that's a very Actually, precious Max, do you mind passing me the big tome just so viewers can have a little look at this but the viewers can't look too closely because then yes, they, maybe, they, maybe we just look at the, the tome from the, from the yeah. exterior oh, that's a big point isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a, quite a little bit of history yes. in there yeah uh, and as, as you say, it's still very much a, an active part of what we do. And uh, um, uh, all the new tweets go into there, the state tweets go into there alongside the, the, the old traditional ones. I see. Um, and the difference between tweets and tartans is that, well, the state tweets are for the property, for the, the state, whereas tartans are for the family. Uh, so that's, that's the major distinction. I would have to say that making uh, making a tweed is much more fun than, than making a tartan. Tartans are very simple. Um, you have exactly the same uh, yarns, coloration uh, in the weft as in the warp. Mm. So it's quite straightforward. Uh, whereas tweeds you can have a lot more fun with, with uh, the different components, the, the color mixtures. Yeah. Um, actually, you might be interested to have, yeah. a, have a look at those. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is quite quite fascinating when you, when you think how many individual yarns go into a tweed. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think that just one yarn, uh, for example, this one yarn uh, starts off life as as that. So those the, those color combinations all mixed together, mm. uh, carded into this uh, top uh, so it's a wool top but all those colors mixed together uh, to come up with that generate that and then into the yarn so all those colors are in that little bit of yarn and and pound for pound this is equivalent to this and then this and then this yeah exactly those colors exactly that proportion mm. end up as that yarn incredible and then when you look at you know, a lot of the tweeds, they will have, it could be up to uh, 12 or 14 different yarns, mm. all with their own different recipe, mm. and different color combination. And that's what really brings tweeds to life. And you can have great fun combining uh, those color mixtures and twisting them with, with worsteds and uh, coming up with some really interesting effects. Speaking of twisting things and speaking of twisting worsteds and woolens, that's part of Lovett's history too, right? Yes, yeah. Well, uh, Going back a hundred years to uh, the traditional tweeds that were made at the time, yeah. um, most of the tweeds then were made with woolen spun, quite heavily, uh, quite heavy woolen spun yarns right. twisted together, um, which was great for for making warm, heavy tweeds, but not quite so good for export to warmer countries. Mm. Um, so our forebearers. Uh, came up with a uh, came up with the idea of combining finer worsteds with mm. the heavy woolens, mm. twisting them together. So you still had the the character of mm. the heavy tweeds, uh, the color mixtures, but you could make a much lighter, much mm. more uh, generally acceptable weight cloth. Interesting. And that then led uh, gave the opportunity to export a lot of the product. And, and really took the, the business on another step and took Tweed to the world. That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, for the benefit of new for of viewers um, new to this, can you explain the difference between a worsted and a woolen? Right, okay, with, with woolen, woolen spun yarns, um, you'll take the likes of, of 
this top. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll mix all the colours together uh, and you'll card the, the, the colours together. It goes through a carding machine which mixes all the fibres together. Um, and within that wool you can have quite, quite short fibres um, mixed together and get that kind of life from the mixtures, mm -hmm. from the mixture because of the short fibres being mixed with some long fibres, etc. Um, but with a worsted yarn, what you do is you take that and then you comb the top, which takes out all the short fibres and just leaves the long fibres, mm. um, and which can then be spun much finer, mm. uh, finer and stronger. What you lose in that process is that, that, that mixture, that life, uh, from the wool and spun mm. colour mixtures, but you get a much a much finer, stronger yarn, mm. and so especially for for finer suitings, that's particularly appropriate. Yeah. Uh, but then within the tweeds, when you combine the two, you get a very versatile cloth. Yeah, it's a nice mix. Yeah. yeah. And uh, woolens are typically a little bit warmer than worsteds as well, right? Because yes. they have that hairiness. They're bulk to them. bulkier. Mm. Yeah, a, a worsted is 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 much uh, more sheer. Mm. So when when you weave uh, worsteds together, you get a much flatter, much much uh, cleaner type cloth. Mm. But yeah, you're you're right with the woolen spun cloth. Uh, it's it's fuller, it's bulkier, um, and warmer because it's trapping more air. Mm. Uh, and yeah, that's the that's the the comparison. Fabulous. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about um, the the Love It Bunch books because you guys have a lovely cut length business, and the Armory's actually used. I think a little bit of every single one of your bunch books. You, you know, you we have. have many fans even in Hong Kong, despite the weight. Like, it's wonderful cloth. Like, can you explain well, the differences between the various ones? Yeah. Um, right, okay. We have three, if you like, uh, three bunches that are based on traditional type sporting tweeds. Mm -hmm. um, starting off with uh, the Etric. Mm -hmm. The Etric is a, a 640 gram, uh, 21 ounce. Uh, sporting tweed, mm. and this will stand up to, to, to a fair amount of abuse. Okay. So if you're if you're crawling about in the heather or uh, crawling over rocks, uh, then this is this is the the tweed for you. Okay. Uh, it also makes a very um, well. Actually, I'm wearing metric, so yeah. it's it, the versatility is there as well to have a a much more um, contemporary type yeah. product. Well, it's quite compact too. Yes, yeah. yes, and it, and it has to be compact for the the, the sort of sporting tweed element mm. of it. I see. Okay. Um, so that's that's really the the closest thing we have to the traditional estate tweeds. That's mm -hmm. that's where we sort of start. Okay. Then moving on to the Kirkton, which is just a little bit lighter, it's using a lot of the the same uh, components, uh, but not so much uh, twist within the within the cloth. So it's a, it's a single yarn, but it's a, a wool and spun single yarn, which allows us to take the weight down to around 500 grams, mm -hmm. uh, which is 16 ounce. So for somebody who's wanting that traditional color mixture to type tweed, mm. then the Kirkton is maybe a bit more um, uh, approachable. I see, okay. Uh, so uh, this is still good for, for suits and for jacket, mm. um, requiring a certain amount of performance, mm -hmm. but not quite up to the level of Etric. Mm. Uh, then moving down to something a bit finer, we go to the Teviot, and the Teviot is a, a 430 gram, uh, 1314 ounce tweed, but this then uses softer lamb's wool and worsted twisted together. Mm. So again, you get, you, you get a certain character of the traditional tweeds, but definitely without the, the sporting performance mm. that's re required from the heavier bunches. Mm. Um, by most by most uh, calculations, uh, it's still it's, yeah, it's still very um, practical, mm. um, and it will still stand up to anything you or I could throw at it, um, but not quite as not not quite as uh, uh, performance led as these two bunches. Is there any difference in the palette? Um, yes, because uh, the Etric and the Kirkton, because that, that's using the, the wool and spun yarn as one of the components, mm -hmm. you get this colour mixture mm -hmm. element. Um, when you go down to the, the lambs wools and the worsteds, there are colour mixtures in there, 
but just not quite as vibrant as the the curtain and the etric. Mm, so, so it, it's it's softer, softer type coloration, still very much uh, appropriate to maybe uh, tweed colorations that people would mm. typically think of. Uh, although we also take it into to more urban. Mm -hmm. urban type colorations with the, the charcoals and the navies. These are lovely too, yeah. especially that gray herringbone. Yeah. That gray herringbone's fantastic. Yeah, we, we think they're all fantastic, but yeah. they're all fantastic, we're, exactly. we're, we're biased. <laughs> um, and you can use them also for light overcoats, right? Especially the Krypton oh yes. and the Etric yep. would be okay for a light overcoat. Yeah, and uh, well, the Etric is, is very typical of, a, of overcoating weight. Mm -hmm. um, but the other two now are quite, quite acceptable, maybe Going back, you know, thirty, forty years, the TV it would have been seen as, as quite light. Mm -hmm. But now, for whatever reason, whether you believe in global warming or whatever, TV it is, is quite, uh, quite widely used yeah. for. It's very versatile. For, it's good weight. Yeah, for good coating. Weight. Yeah, um, and on the coatings uh, topic, that brings us on to this bunch, the heritage coatings. Mm -hmm. And within this bunch, we have a variety of different constructions. Uh, ranging from uh, the lightest, uh, the the covered cloths. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have two or three colours in the covered cloths. And then progressing through different uh, constructions up to, well, including double cloths. Uh, we have uh, splittable double cloths there, which are, are very, mm. uh, very luscious, very full, uh, beautiful overcoatings. Yeah. Um, Our Tokyo coat is made of a double cloth as well. Andy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and right up to the uh, keepers tweeds, which are over nine hundred grams per meter, and they will they will truly stand up to any abuse you can throw at them. Yeah, I bet it looks very tough. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but but again, uh, they're used in sporting um, uh, scenarios, mm -hmm. um, but the question the question mm, is, is quite popular for it. But then also uh, contemporary yeah. fashion yeah. Uh, will, will quite often go down. Some people down use it for shoot. bags too, right? And bags, mm. yep. Uh, uh, very appropriate for that. Mm. Um, so that's, that's purely for, for coatings. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, and then moving on to something or a couple of qualities which are a bit, a bit lighter and softer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the home bunch and the Sonsi bunch. The home is colour spun Shetlands, around 400 grams per meter. Mm. Um, so these definitely move out of the performance tweed area uh, and into uh, more contemporary type tweeds, mm. uh, softer, That's lighter. Uh, but you're still getting the, the, the rich colour mixtures within within that. Can you tell us a little bit about Shetland tweeds? Like why does sh why do Shetland tweeds have such a sort of hairy look and feel to them? Um, just purely from uh, comes from the sheep, the Shetland sheep. That is the character of of that wool. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you have, you have different lambsels. You have uh, you have Cheviot sheep, which is uh, the the wools there are a bit crisper, um, kind of in the same character as Shetland. Um, you have Saxony lambs wools, which are actually the longer uh, staple fibers, um, and and a bit softer. Um, but it's just purely what's what's been bred as uh, as the Shetland breed. I see. Um, Shetland has been kind of uh, used as terminology uh, for a product, which has kind of been debased slightly over the years. Uh, people will refer to Shetland as a as a as a as a type of quality, as opposed to something definitely coming from Shetland. Mm. Um, and and that's that's fine. It's it's to do with the breed of sheep, um, but that takes us on to the Sonsi bunch, which this comes purely from the Shetland sheep, and uh, one of the, the the beauties of the Shetland sheep is that it has all these different coloured um, fibres within the fleece. Mm. So this bunch is made up of completely undyed natural Shetland wool from the, the, the Shetland Islands. Um, so what they do is they will separate out the different colours from the fleece. Mm -hmm. um, so you have about three or four, well, more than that, you have about seven or eight different base colours. Uh, and they have, they have wonderful um, romantic names like Mogat and Murat and Sheila. 
Um, and we, we take these colours as the foundation for the, the designs and you can come up with some, some very nice uh, designs yeah. as a result. Beautiful. And so this is purely natural undyed, whereas mm. these Shetlands are, are colour spun. This is all natural undyed. And quite a, quite a unique product. Yeah, um, fantastic. I noticed in your cut length, you don't, because you, you do make some lovely suitings as well. Any plans to move that to cut length one day? Well, funny you should say that. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I see you're wearing a, I, a very I'm, smart yeah, uh, yeah, flannel some, there. Like that, yeah. And yeah. we may have something in the, in the pipeline uh, going down that route in, in the not too distant future. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Well, I look no. forward to revealing that one day we'll, we'll, we'll towards you, the end of the year. Right? We'll keep you updated okay. on that. We'll yeah, keep you updated. Thank you. Uh, okay, last question. Um, any personal favorites among what you've shown us today? They're all they're all our babies, but um, anything with with color the the color mixtures that we were talking about mm. that, that really brings uh, the tweets to life. I mean, mm. something even just as simple as uh, there you go. Yeah, this and that that to me is beautiful. Yeah. I, I can't say it's my favorite, as in. Uh, that would defend the other tweets, but uh, <laughs> um, I mean, just seeing the purple, the, the, the heathery purples working in there in the color mixture, yeah. along with the greens, and, yeah. and it's so simple, but yet it's, it's it's beautiful, and that that typifies, you know, the what, the effort that goes into yeah. to these tweets. I mean, I think until you see this, you never really fully appreciate just how complex those color mixtures are. It's yeah. wonderful. I mean, we we, we literally design thousands of, of new designs, new cloths uh, every year. Mm. It's just an ongoing process. Mm. Um, but, you know, you, you go back to something like this and it just, it just, it just uh, stops you for a second just to seeing all the colors in there. Um, and that's, as I say, I wouldn't say that's my favorite tweet, but that is typical of, of what the color mixtures uh, can sort of bring to it. If somebody tries to copy that kind of coloration, but without putting uh, the effort into the, the different components, um, you just get something a bit lifeless, something mm. that doesn't quite uh, have, have the same vibrancy. Um, so you, you have to go, I mean, that, that, there's a huge amount of work goes into spinning yarns uh, containing this amount of the colors. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to spin, you know, maybe 600 kilos at a time yeah. um, just to get one yarn. I see. So, and that, that goes a long way. I can tell. Well, Alan, thank you so much for this very little, this very wonderful tour of the range and of what you do here. Love it. No problem. And thank you very much for for joining us. It's uh, right. lovely to see you and your team team yeah. here. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.